PIC32 Architecture Overview Welcome to this module on the PIC32 family from Microchip. The module will overview the PIC32 architecture and some of its key features, which will provide you with architectural details that are common to all PIC32 devices. This module is 14 pages in length and lasts just over 15 minutes. This is a simplified view of the PIC32 chip. The PIC32 employs the M4K 32-bit core from MIPS Technologies. The M4K is a Harvard architecture based core. It contains separate instruction and data buses connected to the bus matrix. The core connects to the rest of the modules via bus matrix. The bus matrix is a high-speed switch. It establishes a point-to-point -point connection between modules. Modules such as the CPU core, USB, and DMA connect to the SRAM, SPI, UART, etc. via the bus matrix and peripheral bus. The bus matrix runs at the same speed as the CPU, while the peripheral bus can be programmed to run at a different clock setting than the CPU. The exact bus clock is determined by the peripheral bridge setting. In this block diagram, notice that the PIC32 uses 128-bit wide flash memory. Such a wide memory path is specifically designed to increase the instruction throughput and improve overall CPU performance. To further enhance the performance, the PIC32 employs a 128-bit prefetch catch module. This module can be programmed to look ahead and prefetch the next 128 bits of instructions and store them in an on-chip cache memory. This module is the reason why the PIC32 can continue to provide high performance even when the CPU is running faster than flash memory speed. Here is the inside of the M4K core. The M4K core uses a five-stage execution pipeline. This means that each instruction is executed in five different stages. Once the pipeline is full, the M4K core executes one instruction per CPU clock. MIPS Technologies rates its M4K core at 1.5 dry stone MIPS per megahertz. As with any other microcontroller with slow flash memory, when running faster than the flash speed, the dry stone rating would drop. However, in the case of PIC32, the on-chip prefetch cache and high-speed SRAM minimize that performance drop. When it comes to the memory mapping method, the PIC32 uses the unified memory map, meaning that both instruction and data space reside in one linear address space, each occupying a unique range of addresses. With this scheme, a programmer will use one address pointer to access both instruction and data memory areas. Another point to note is that the PIC32 core can execute from RAM. Typical Harvard architectures do not allow execution from RAM, but the PIC32 includes a special bus matrix configuration that allows it to make part of the RAM executable. The PIC32 uses the high performance version of the multiply and divide hardware module. A very powerful feature of this module is that it contains its own autonomous pipeline. As a result, once the CPU issues a multiply or divide instruction, the CPU may continue to fetch and execute next instructions while the multiply and divide unit performs calculation in parallel. If the CPU tries to access the result before the multiply or divide operation is complete, the CPU will stall until the operation is complete. There are different cycle counts for multiply and divide operations. It takes one cycle to perform 16 by 16 or 32 by 16 multiply operations and two cycles for other sizes. The divide operation takes from 11 to 32 cycles. Exact cycle count depends on the dividend operator size. The smaller the dividend operand, the shorter the divide operation. 
By default, the PIC32 executes 32-bit instructions. The 32-bit instructions are designed to provide higher performance. If the application is code size sensitive, it may use MIPS-16E instructions. The MIPS-16E instructions are 16-bit wide. With the use of MIPS-16E instructions, applications can save up to 40% of code size compared to the 32-bit instructions. There will be a reduction in performance when using MIPS-16E instructions. However, with the 128-bit wide prefetch cache, some applications see no adverse impact. The PIC32 architecture uses a concept called bus master modules. The bus masters are a special set of modules that can initiate a read or write transaction of other modules called targets. For example, the CPU can read and write to SRAM or any other peripheral. Similarly, the DMA can read and write to any other peripherals on the bus. At present, CPU, ICD, USB, and DMA are the bus masters in PIC32 architecture. Future PIC32 products may add more bus master modules. The bus master modules run at the same speed as the CPU. All bus masters, except the CPU, essentially have an integrated DMA capability to autonomously perform reads and writes of a peripheral. They can transfer data within the microcontroller or outside of the microcontroller without any assistance from the CPU. The bus masters may read and write other bus masters too. For example, the DMA module may read or write USB registers. However, the bus master cannot access core registers in the CPU. Only the CPU can access the core CPU registers. Peripherals such as the prefetch cache, USB, DMA, SRAM, interrupts, and I.O. ports are called SysCLK peripherals. These peripherals run at the same speed as the CPU and other bus masters. As a result, all accesses to the SysCLK peripherals complete in one cycle. Typically, peripherals with high data throughput are placed on the SysCLK bus. Note that the I.O. port modules are also on the SysCLK bus. This means that the CPU can access I.O. ports at max operating frequency. The PBCLK peripherals are one more class of peripherals. These peripherals run from PBCLK. The SPI, UART, ADC, RTCC, I2C, etc. are examples of the PBCLK peripherals. The exact value of the PBCLK is determined by the setting of the peripheral bridge module. Available options are to run PBCLK at 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 4, and 1 to 8 of SysCLK speed. Normally, PBCLK peripherals are slow in speed and do not require very high data throughput. When the PBCLK is running at 1 to 1 with SysCLK, the CPU and other bus masters will be able to access PBCLK peripherals in one cycle. As PBCLK divider gets larger, a read of the PBCLK peripheral will take as many clocks as the divider value. The bus matrix is essentially a high-speed switch. Once a bus master initiates a transaction, the bus matrix establishes a point-to-point -point path from the bus master to the target module. While this first transaction is in progress, another bus master may initiate a second transaction to yet another target. Depending on the target, the bus matrix may establish a parallel path. This slide shows an example of three concurrent data paths. While the CPU is fetching instructions from flash via the prefetch cache module, the USB may read or write SRAM and at the same time, the DMA may read data from the UART module. In this example, all three paths are separate and there will not be any conflict or delay. If the CPU were to access SRAM while the USB is in middle of accessing SRAM, there will be conflict and the bus matrix will arbitrate and allow one to complete before the other can continue. 
The exact priority is determined by the programming of the bus matrix registers. The software may give highest priority to the CPU, DMA, or USB. In addition, the software may select one of three different arbitration schemes, fixed priority, fixed priority with CPU at lowest priority, and rotating priority scheme. Depending on the system requirements, an application would select an appropriate arbitration scheme to achieve the required data throughput and timings. The PIC32 offers a flexible interrupt controller. It can be programmed to operate in single vector mode or multi-vector mode. In single vector mode, all interrupts use a common vector, while in multi-vector mode there are a total of 64 vectors. Each vector can have up to eight different preemption priority levels. A value of seven indicates the highest priority, while a value of one indicates the lowest priority, and a value of zero indicates that the vector is disabled. In summary, the higher the value, the higher the priority, and it can preempt lower priority interrupts. In addition to preemption priority, each vector can also have up to four levels of sub-priorities. A sub-priority defines the order in which interrupts will be taken if there is more than one interrupt of the same priority. The priority seven vectors also get a dedicated shadow register set. In normal operation, when the CPU is executing at priority six or lower, the CPU operates on a primary register set. But when a priority seven interrupt occurs, the interrupt controller automatically switches to the shadow set and jumps to the appropriate vector. With the dedicated shadow set, the priority seven interrupt offers faster interrupt response as compared to other priority interrupts. The reason for this is that when the priority seven interrupt occurs, the application does not have to save the entire register set context. Instead, it only needs to save a few critical registers and start executing the user interrupt handler. Similarly, when the priority seven interrupt handler finishes its task, the application does not have to restore the full context either. It only needs to perform a few steps and immediately return to the previous execution state. In an embedded system, the ability to quickly manipulate I.O. ports and bits is highly desired. The PIC32 architecture resolves this limitation by providing a set of registers called set, clear, and invert. Essentially, for a majority of special function registers, or SFRs, there are three additional registers. For example, the LATA SFR is followed by LATA CLR, LATA SET, and LATA INV. To clear a group of bits in the LATA register, you would write the corresponding mask values into the LATA CLR register. For example, a write of 0x8001 to the LATA CLR register would clear bits 0 and 15. Similarly, a write to the SET register would set the corresponding bits and a write to INV register would toggle the bits. When you write to any of the SET, CLR, or ENV registers, the underlying hardware performs the read, modify, write operation in a single clock. This hardware assistance not only accelerates the bit manipulation, but it also provides automaticity. This means that the set, clear, and invert operations cannot be interrupted. This automatic bit manipulation capability simplifies the programming logic. Now you don't have to guard your I.O. bit manipulation logic with interrupt, disable, and enable sequences, or worry about read, modify, write problems of I.O. ports.